Okay. We want to begin our message today. I, I, I read a story this week, and it's a brief story. There was a a flight across the ocean. They ran into some problems, and the captain came on the intercom and said, "Folks, I'm sorry, I hate to tell you." But we have the engine trouble and said, no way we can make it with all of us aboard. And we've calculated that if four people were not on here, we might save the rest of the people. So I need four volunteers. I have to put some volunteer for it. And then the British guy stepped forward and he said, God save the Queen. Yeah. Next became a Frenchman. And he said, Viva la France. Jump. And then came a long Texan along and pushed two Mexicans out and said, Remember the Alamo. Pick <laughs> 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 brother Enrique, he's born in Mexico City. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh man, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my subject today. Get out of serious business today. God's prescription for a sick and dying world. <laughs> we all familiar with Second Chronicles. 7 verse 14 probably the most popular scripture you see is John 3 16 and this would be second to that that you see printed but this is a prescription that will cure our ills if my people he didn't say if the devil's people if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And then Isaiah added to this, verse 22, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there's none else, or no other place to turn. But particularly, we want to look at 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, if my people, now our generation, whether you want to admit it or not, you say, uh, Preacher, you're a fatalist. No, I'm not fatal, not when it comes to God. But God got some good things in store for us that He wants to give us if we'll let Him. But our generation is in trouble. No one can deny it, or you're not looking if you refuse to admit it. And we read in the scripture what happened to people and nations when they forget God. The Bible says, woe is the nation that forget God. And folks, that's what the attempt of our nation and our world has been. I'm not just being negative about this. I'm trying to be honest about what's going on. Now what prompted it? Uh, this particular message, I had looked at a number, but I picked up the newspaper yesterday. There's a story, some of you may have read about it. Young man down here in Alvin. Anybody read it? About a young fellow in Alvin that was uh, just Friday sentenced to death, capital punishment. 31 years old and I read this story 
quite sickening, but it fits our generation and what's so sad. This young man accosted a little eight-year-old girl, started to molest her, and she began crying. So he carried her back to her house, prayed that she was going to tell on him, got his own three-year-old, three-month-old baby, three-month-old son, and carried him, molested him, and then stomped his brains out with his feet, with his boots on. Can you imagine? A little precious infant baby of your own that God gave you and you'll snuff the life out. And the thing about it, this young man says, I'm 100% guilty. I don't want any, I want to fire my uh, lawyer. I've got coming to me the death penalty. Y'all gave it to me and I want it done now. I don't want to wait. sad to say you go back and read this man's life and from the age of three to six he was molested he ran a chain reaction and then he takes this precious little boy and snuffs his life out okay it's just tragic that those things are happening on a regular basis. And as Brother Enrique pointed out to the Sunday school class this morning, and folks, y'all missing blessings for not being here. But he said they're taking babies every day and killing them. But they call it abortion. But they're taking the life that God gave. It's happening on a regular basis. Sin is rampaging. That's the only way you can put it. The Bible says that sin brings death. We've got a nation or a generation that's committing suicide. We have the same God that Noah had. When God looked upon the people in Noah's day, it said it grieved him that he had made man. He repented himself, he says. And therefore he said, I'm going to destroy man from the face of the earth. Got to remind you that our Lord said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. God was forced to bring judgment. But man's imagination of his heart was only evil continually. Oh, it's a three-letter word called sin. Sin brings separation from God. And sin is like cancer. It grows and it grows and grows and it destroys. In our day, men have turned from nature and done those things that are abominable toward God. And folks, God is not a respecter of persons. <coughs> we all know that he burned up Sodom and Gomorrah, did he not? Why do we think we can get by with the same God that destroyed this before? Who are we fooling? But you can look and see the sin that is rampaging. People are excluding God from their life or making an attempt to. Another sign that we're living in those days is the Lord's churches 
are evident of what's happening in our day. Linda and I were up in East Texas uh, last week. And I get to drive and she gets to watch all the scenery and point out to me certain things, which I appreciate it. She's a good helpmate. But if you're going north in the little town of Dybal, where I used to pastor, if you look over to the left, there's three churches. All three of them have for sale signs in front of them. Because people have quit going. One of them was a split off of a church that I started in 1966. People had a little difference, and Baptists do that, you know. <laughs> but they went up and started another church, and they uh, have those three buildings for sale. Another church we knew of back in the East Texas, we were told last week, they've converted it because we, people would go and they've converted it to a wedding chapel. And folks, the thing that's disturbing and the flat truth of the matter is people have just quit going to church. Y'all run into anybody lately that said, well, I haven't been to church for a while. Yeah, about 10 years. There's a lack of interest in spiritual things, isn't it? Folk, I gotta tell you, mankind is a loser when we ignore God. God has so much good things for us in store. And as the scripture said, if we were to count them, they're more than can be numbered what he has in store for us. Our generation is starving to death. Maybe not for bread and water or food, but for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have thank the Lord for the group that meets together here and goes out in the name of Christ knocking on doors telling people, hey, we love you. We want you to go to heaven with us. And people will, will there openly place their trust in Christ and pray the sinner's prayer. And folks, that's what the Lord called us to do. But we've got a people that dying without Christ. But let's look at a moment. We're talking about the prescription for a dying world. What's not the cure? Well, let me hasten to tell you, political leaders cannot save our generation. That's right. The United Nations, we here on the news daily of the nations that have joined together and hey, that we're going to make a stand and the problem is they're trying to make a stand without God. Uh, our President Bush, number 41, the older one, during his administration as president, he kept speaking of New World Order that was coming to existence and was going to help mankind. Folk, I can read the Bible that's in front of me and I can tell you the scripture says there's going to come a day where there'll be a new world order. Unfortunately, it's going to be controlled by the man of sin, the Antichrist. He's going to deceive the world and the world's going to do obeisance to him. You're going to talk to people in the notion of taking a mark. If you want to buy, 
for sale, you have to receive the mark. It's going to be a one world order. Sounds good, doesn't it? He's going to make it sound good. But my Bible tells me that God's children are not going to receive that mark. If they truly are the child of God, the folks the Bible said anybody that receives that mark can't make it. Yeah. Either in the right hand or the forehead. So again, our political leaders are not going to solve that problem. Material things are not the solution. Men today are measured by their cars or their houses or their bank accounts. But I got to tell you, folks, God is not a respecter of person. Amen. He could care less, for that matter, who you are. You know, we all search and look and hope and pray for or cure for cancer, do we not? Because we see it as an enemy. Uh, one and, and, and folks seeing this and, and cancer is much the same but new inventions medically and folks our medical world has come a long way of things they can do to help us extend their life they're great but it's not the solution for our current need Religion, do you hear me? I said religion is not the cure. Allah, Muhammad, Buddha, Guru, Jim Jones, or whatever you want to call them, is not the answer. Okay, there's a lot of so-called gods in the world. But Jesus said, I am the way truth and life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. You know, folk, religion, somebody said, well, don't say anything about religion. Linda and I were up at Huntington the other day and a next door neighbor came holding a pole up and on the end of it he had a rattlesnake. <laughs> he just it just killed. We all know that a rattlesnake is poison, isn't it? We don't say anything about that little snake. <laughs> Folks, if something's poison, you need to be warned. Amen. And people that will follow a false teaching. worse than poison. And the Bible tells us in the latter day that many shall depart from the faith giving heed, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Lord told us that was going to happen didn't he? Did he know what he was talking about? I'd rather think he did. If something is poisoned, a person needs to be warned, do they not? And God's going to call me in account one of these days. He's given me the privilege to come and share His Word with you. And i got to answer to Him for what I say. And if I don't warn you of the wicked way, that I haven't done what the Lord called me to do. The Lord told the prophets to warn the wicked of their way, did He not? God's prescription for our current need. Look again at 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. If my people, if my people, 
He didn't say if the devil's people, but if my people. So the answer lies with us that claim to be Christians. Mm -hmm. Doesn't lie with Russia, Putin, China, the folk that lie with God's redeemed. People that have claimed the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It lies with the people who know the Lord. But let's look at the conditions. He said, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves. And folks, most of us got too much pride to wear around. Wait for somebody to come along and knock it off. But the Lord said we need to humble ourselves, didn't he? And he said, and seek my way, I pray. Believing that God will answer according to his will. And so when we pray, the Lord told us to pray according to his will, but we must know his will in order to do that. But the Lord said we need to seek his face. And by assembling ourselves together as we have this morning, we're doing what the Lord called us to do. By searching His Word. But He said, If my people will turn from their wicked way, can God's people be wicked? Obviously they can. There have many cases in the scripture where we can see where God's people did some wicked things. But I think particularly of Aaron, whom God chose to be the first high priest of the tabernacle, the brother of Moses. He helped Israel build the golden calf. He was one of the leaders in that thing. And y'all remember they took their clothes off and they praised the calf, they gave the calf glory for delivering them from Egypt. Folks, that's wicked. That's right. And God judged them for that. God people can be wicked. The Lord told us we need to turn from our wicked ways, didn't he? And watch quickly. Our sins are twofold. They're twofold. The Lord told us to love not the world. You're in the world, but we're not part of it. To love not the world. But we find ourselves sometimes committing those worldly things. And we have the sin of commission. Of things that we do. But more importantly, I believe for the Christian it's not what we do as far as commission, but we drop that C on that wording, the sin of omission. The Lord said, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. I believe that's the greatest sin that we as God's children commit is what we fail to do. Amen. These guys and gals, guys and gals that's going out knocking on doors. Number one, people don't like to be told they're sinners. And they don't like people knocking on their doors, so number one, they just said, get lost. These folks persistent and how many we've had saved now since March brother a little bit over 400 over 400 that have made professions of faith that 400 people is going to be in heaven that wouldn't be there
But folk, we neglect so many things that we ought not. But the Lord promised us if we would turn back to Him, that He'd hear from heaven and He'd forgive our sins and He'd heal our land. Well, our land is sick right now. But the Lord told us that He'd heal us if we let Him. You know, salvation is an individual thing. I know a lot of parents who won't be saved for their kids. Don't work that way. <laughs> we got to do it ourselves. Don't worry about your neighbor when it comes down to salvation. What about you? How is it with you and the Lord? You're here today and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior. Right where you are. Right now, simply admit to God you're a sinner. And then confess Him publicly by simply walking down this aisle. Tell me you've trusted Christ and you want to follow the Lord in baptism. 